bringing back students. We have about 240 of them here on campus, a very small number, very small number of staff and a very tiny number of faculty, but this is part of our process of beginning to repopulate the campus as we're living through COVID. But this was an exciting year too for our alumni. Our chairman of our board, Roz Brewer, has been elevated to the position of CEO of Walgreens Boots Alliance. She is now the only black woman CEO of a Fortune 500 company. So we're very excited about that. And then of course, Stacey Abrams, our alum, has been nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize. So um, Spelman College has really taken center stage, always takes center stage, but continues to take center stage with the extraordinary accomplishments of the college and of its alumni. And one of the things that I thought was very striking about Roz and Stacy both is that whenever they're asked about uh, their journey, they, you know, they of course talk about their family, they talk about their faith, but they always talk about the influence of Spelman College. So as all of us have been living through these past 10 months, which have been a, a turbulent 10 months, the challenge has been for us to make sure that Mother Spellman continues to be the soil and the root, the ark that shelters in the storm, and the bridge that travels us over troubled waters for the more than 2,000 women who come to Spellman with their dreams of becoming global leaders and change makers. So today I'm going to share with you what we've uh, who've had the great pri privilege of being the current stewards of Spelman, are doing to keep the promise of Spelman College alive and well and thriving. So let's take a look at the first slide. Am I controlling the slides or, oh, thank you. Okay, great. So this afternoon, uh, I'm going to touch on several things. First, I'm gonna give you an overview of how we're managing the campus according to our path forward plan. Then I'd like to share with you our dashboard, and that's our way of keeping track quantitatively of how much progress this, the college is making in the area of enrollment, of academics, of financial planning, as well as fundraising. Um, I'd like to then give you a little update on our strategic plan progress. I think it's been pretty extraordinary that despite what we've been going through for the past 10 years, we've made great progress on our strategic plan, and particularly in the area of uh, promoting innovation. I'll also share with you some, some thinking that we have been doing around uh, altering our business model, and also introduce to you our plans for a public launch of our camp, capital campaign. Next slide. So in, bringing, in thinking about bringing students back and, be, and beginning to repopulate the campus, we, we, we abided by the same three guiding principles that have been guiding us ever since this pandemic started. That is, all of our decisions have to safeguard the health and safety and well-being of everybody in the Spelman community. Second, our concern is in doing that, we maintain the academic excellence that Spelman is known for, and third, that we maintain our financial sustainability and good health for the long-term future of Spelman College. Next slide. We had very clear guidelines for what it would take if a student did decide that she was coming back to campus. She had to have a pre-arrival negative COVID test 72 hours before arrival. She had to sign a pledge saying that she would abide by the medical protocols in, and practices on campus. And we had very strict move-in protocols. And once they got there, the students on campus had to stay within their residence halls for five days. We call this the five-day pause. They could, of course, come out for their, to get grab and go for their meals. And then at the end of that period, they were all tested so that we knew that we were starting the semester with a COVID free student population. And I'm very happy to say that the, the move-in went beautifully. For the most part, so did the five-day pause. We had a few uh, people who violated and violated that clause, and they did have to pay a price for that. 
but overall that our our community was quite wonderful in adopting these protocols. Next slide. So what do these uh, protocols entail? For students, it means they have to be tested twice weekly. We all have a web-based app that uh, in which we enter our daily symptoms and we have to do that every day. If a student does um, test positive, we have, a, we have the entire Beverly Daniel Tatum suite where she will be isolated and or quarantined if she's in the presence of somebody who did test positive. We have had actually for over a month weekly testing of faculty and staff. And of course, we have to wear our masks, wash our hands and watch our distance. Next slide. Um, Spelman College also has been doing a, a great deal to modify the interiors of classrooms, residence halls, study spaces, and dining spaces. We have protocols for physical, not only physical distancing, but having our cleaning staff do periodic and regular sanitizing. If you were to come to campus, you would see mask and sanitizer dispensers throughout the campus. And in those places where, where staff are student facing, we have plexiglass barriers such as at our mail center. And you will see throughout the day this frequent sanitizing and disinfecting. Next slide. Um, we've also done a lot of work in terms of thinking through how do we keep our students engaged here on campus, but also recognizing that overwhelmingly most of our students are still learning remotely. And so we've enacted all kinds of activities virtual scavenger hunts, movie nights, Peloton workouts. Peloton gave all of our students their video workouts for free. Uh, we do contemplative practice. We, we just have a very rich menu of wellness and recreational events and also intellectual events as well that will start uh, now that the semester has started formally. Next slide. We have made really good progress in terms of elevate the Spelman difference. One of our goals here was to add endowed faculty positions at the college. And I am pleased to report that we are able to add four, one in the Department of Economics, uh, two in uh, the Division of the Arts, and one in the Women's Center and Resource Center, the Audrey Lodge Professorship in Queer Studies. Next slide. Um, here, enhanced operational excellence has been some of our most dramatic changes. You may recall that a group of our um, alumni trustees got together and, and held a 25 at 20, 25 fundraising campaign that really kicked off this part of our strategic plan by raising over a million dollars for us for a technology fund. As a result, we've been, we have replaced our fiber optic here on campus. We've migrated from Lotus Notes to Microsoft 365. We've upgraded Banner and we've put into the hands of our students, faculty and staff, literally hundreds of laptops, tablets, and, and made, that, made it possible for them to fully participate in our new digital world. The, for the future, our CIO envisions us having a fiber optic ring around the entire AUC, which would allow us to engage with major research centers in, 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 uh, and enable us to bring large data sets onto campus so that our faculty and our students can participate in major research efforts. He's also looking at a complete and total overhaul in the next two or three years of how we manage all of our customer relationships. We've made advances in cybersecurity and our innovation lab, which is set up for our faculty and our students to really use as a resource has been upgraded with wonderful new technology and opportunities for our students and faculty to try out some of their creative projects. Next slide. So let me focus a little bit on some of the new programs that have come into Spelman during our capital campaign and have really strengthened our strategic plan. As, as many of you know, we're, we're in the middle of planning and fundraising for a new academic facility. 
And even as we plan for that new academic facility, we have, we have continued to develop, to develop the programs that are gonna be in it. So for example, we have an, an AUC collective in art history and curatorial studies. Our director of that, Dr. Cheryl Finley, has gotten partnerships from Sotheby's. She's um, engaged us in a partnership with the Venice Biennale, which will enable some of our students to go over there. And she's working on many other uh, partnerships and collaborations that will expand the opportunities for students in art history and curatorial studies here. We have begun the planning for a center for black entrepreneurship that will be located in the Department of Economics. And we have been doing that in conjunction with projects in our innovation lab and our wonderful co-curricular program, Spellpreneur, that has been, and all of this has been supported by gifts from a major bank, the Ford Foundation and the Blackstone Launchpad. We also, I am very proud of this. We have also figured out how to make our new facility a site, a site for the management of stormwater. And the importance of that is that, you know, the AUC sits up on a little hill. So when it rains really hard, the debris washes down into the Proctor Creek watershed. And it also causes flooding below us. We have figured out that in our project, in our new facility, we can collect that stormwater. And not only will it um, mitigate some of the impact on our local community, but it'll also provide us with um, several million gallons of non-potable water that we can use for things like irrigation and washing laundry and other tasks in a way that's going to really drive down the cost of water for the college. So we're very excited about that project as well because Spelman does really think of itself as, as being a sustainability leader. Next slide. We have established the AUC Data Science Initiative. Uh, you're looking at the uh, photograph of Dr. Talitha Washington, a Spelman alumna who will direct the AUC Data Science Initiative. This is an initiative that includes Morehouse, Spelman, Clark Atlanta University and Morehouse School of Medicine. And we will be establishing a data science major and minor and making sure that data science is an aspect of all of our disciplines in as part of the, a fundamental of liberal arts education. Next slide. We have also uh, are the recipient from the Department of Defense uh, funds to establish a center of excellence for minority women in STEM. This center will focus on research for students and faculty, uh, academic advancement and leadership and professional development, including the opportunity for us to have a partnership with uh, the Army Research Lab in artificial intelligence and machine learning. And I'm very happy to say that Dr. Tamara Pearson, who is also a Spelman alumna, is the director of our Center, for, Center of Excellence. Next slide. And as a part of the Center of Excellence, she has assembled an absolutely stellar um, advisory board that includes representatives from MIT, from the Broad Institute at MIT and Harvard, from IBM, our wonderful, our own Dr. Sylvia Bozeman and Dr. Leda Winfield, uh, as well as Google, uh, the chief AI scientist at Facebook. This is it's just an extraordinary uh, group of advisors. And they're very much at work making sure that Spelman is connected as it should be to all the leading laboratories and, and research activity in their area. Next slide. Um, we also have been successful in, re in obtaining support for faculty and programs that were in existence for many, many years. One example is our food studies program, which is led by Dr. Kimberly Jackson, who's the chair of the Department of Chemistry and Biochemistry. The Kellogg Foundation, um, with the help of our alumna, uh, uh, um, McGee Ossie, who is in Chicago, some of you may know her, helped make that connection. Uh, Kellogg Foundation is now going to be supporting our food studies program for several years. Next slide. We have support from the Mellon Foundation for the Women's Center uh, to have an institute for study of the study of gender and sexuality. That project is being led by Dr. Beverly Guy-Sheftal and Dr. Cynthia Spence. 
Next slide. And speaking of Dr. Spence, as many of you know, she has had for uh, over a decade a, an extraordinary social justice fellows program. And that program, rightly so, has been a magnet for major grants for scholarship, for projects um, that will enable her to support her students and do the good work that her, she and her students have been doing for so many years. So we hats off to Dr. Spence. Next slide. Uh, we have been engaged for the past four years with the Broad Institute for Biomedical Research, MIT and Harvard. And this has been under the leadership of our biology faculty member, Dr. Mentawab Ayulu. And that, that partnership has grown rapidly during this COVID period because it, it is um, mutually important for the bro to uh, have the participation of a diverse set of scientists and important for us to hear cutting edge research that's being done in the area of, of COVID. So this has been a, 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 a very timely partnership for Spelman College. Next slide. One of our fastest growing majors is our health science careers program under the leadership of alumna uh, Dr. Uh, Rosalind Bass. And I'm happy to say that her program has received support from IDEA in bioscience. Next slide. So not only are we making progress on, on projects that were ongoing at Spel Spelman and making sure that those investments are deepening and strengthening those ongoing projects and the work of our science mint scientists, many of whom are Spelman alum, uh, we've also been exploring future partnerships. So for example, if you had driven by uh, the Milligan parking lot uh, a week ago, you would have seen Spelman as a vaccination site along with Morehouse School of Medicine. This was our participation in the effort for them to be able to administer more doses because they were limited uh, with their space. Spelman opened its doors and said, sure, we'll help out. And we expect that we'll hope to continue to be able to help get those vaccinations out um, in the future. We've also learned that uh, we have a new resource at the um, Atlanta University Center. And thank you, Adrian, for introducing us to Ed Farm. Um, Ed Farm is a not-for-profit that will be running the Propel Center, which is a, a, a going to be a physical space uh, supported by Apple and Southern Company. It will be available not only to the college, to the faculty, students, and faculty and students of the Atlanta University Center, it will be available to HBCUs across the country. We're also working with some of our trustees to set up an Atlanta Business Women's uh, Mentorship Program. And I wanna say I'm, I am very uh, eager to make sure that our Sister to Sister Program continues uh, under the leadership of Linda Patton. That's an invaluable program and we're actually are thinking about how we can make that program even more integral to our, our plans to make sure that every Spelman student who graduates has some place to go after graduation, a job, graduate school, or some productive program. So we see a lot of exciting uh, things in the future. Uh, next slide. We also are looking at how we can change our business model so that the college is not as dependent on tuition as it has been. And that is a really important point for us. We know that the median income of African-American families is about, annual income is about $56,000. In, in 10 years or less than 10 years, if we continue to raise our tuition 2%, 3% a year, Spelman College is going to be unaffordable to the average African-American family. So we have, we have, and you've heard me say this before, we, we have decided that we can no longer completely rely on tuition to be our major source of revenue. 
uh, we have to have revenue that comes from outside of the gates. And so in, in the past three years, we have been developing online certificate education that is targeted to adults. And I underlined the word certificate. These are not degree granting programs. These are certificate programs or programs that enable people to take a course here or a course there, or programs that enable um, an adult population to upskill. Um, and we're working with two models. One is uh, with an organization called Guild, and that's an organization that uh, puts us in direct touch with companies that are Guild partners and for whom the companies will um, pay for education as a benefit. The second model is the collegiate model, and that enables us to go out into the open market with a set of courses. And we're, we're uh, right now in the development stage, developing a, a suite of courses, which we hope to begin to offer sometime in June of this year. Next slide. So let me talk about our announcement of our campaign. So in, on March 13th, we will make a public announcement of our campaign. Uh, right now, at this moment, we have raised 93% of our goal. Um, and I suspect that by the time we get to March 13th, we're going to be even closer to the, to the goal. Um, but the campaign is not over. The campaign still has to, uh, a few more years. So we're going to, con even if we reach our, our goal uh, early, we're going to keep on going and see how much we can challenge ourselves. Next slide. Uh, one of the challenges that we have is to really uh, ch uh, challenge ourselves to raise the amount that to uh, raise the amount that we would normally raise in our annual fund. And as you can see, we have several alumni trustees: Carmen Harris, uh, Bonnie Carter, uh, Lavette Russell, who's working also with uh, another trustee, Susan Dunn, to match a challenge that Rhonda Stryker, another trustee, has put up. So uh, Rhonda Stryker has put up $2 million. And if we can raise the $2 million before the end of the um, fiscal year, we'll have a total of $4 million for our annual fund. So we know that we're gonna, we're gonna get there already. We're over uh, where we were this time last year. So we're very grateful for the alumni participation in getting us uh, to increase our annual fund. Next slide. Uh, as I said, the event date is going to be March 13th. It's going to be virtual. There, there will be, I will be live on campus and um, perhaps a few others, but most of this will be taped segments and virtual. Uh, we, of course, want the participation of our board, our key donors, our faculty, our students, our staff, our alumni. So it's all in the planning stages. And so you will hear more later about that. Next slide. And I just wanna end uh, by, by saying, um, we, we all know now that this is, this is a time where we are called on to speak on behalf of uh, Spelman College. And as the president of Spelman College, it has been such a joy to, to um, see that the world is now listening to us much more intently, perhaps, than they have in the past. It's been a joy to see that um, many more people are recognizing the incredible value proposition that is Spelman College. It's, it's been a joy to talk about our students, about our alumni, about what we accomplish with a fraction of the resources that other other organizations, other colleges and universities have. Um, so I have taken great pleasure in the uh, opportunity to be out there and be your representative and the representative of the college out in the world. Next slide. And of course, we are incredibly uh, proud and pleased of the accomplishments of our, our Spelman alums and as I said, uh, it is so gratifying because our alums 
are so quick to point to Spelman as the reason for uh, their success and the success of their journey. Next slide. And so we continue to lift them up. We continue to celebrate them. And we know that uh, this continues to be a very um, challenging time for the college. We're not out of the woods yet, but I will say we're getting better at living in the woods and finding new survival tools for our students, our staff, and for our Spelman community. So I just want to once again, take this opportunity to, to thank the alums. You have been there for us. Uh, you have been there to help us, to support us, to connect us, to network for us, and we are grateful. Thank you. Adrian, you're on mute. We wanted to see if you had a few moments to take a couple of questions. And I, um, for one, am so excited just about the breadth of information that you continue to share with us as alumni. And I don't know if I should be more excited about the technology initiatives or the faculty endowed chairs, because I was an econ major and I know many of us have been waiting to see what will be the new piece that propels the economics department into another level, because we've seen a lot from us uh, for, at Spelman in the sciences. But I, I'm gonna kick off with a question as people put them in the chat, if that's okay, Dr. Sure. Campbell. And I have um, just one, and I wanna really focus on where you said there was an area of concern, mm -hmm. and that's the dip in the yield. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to see, as alumni, are there things that we should be doing that we're not currently doing? And I wanna paint the backdrop because we um, do have a student recruitment committee Mm -hmm. And they did a wonderful job last year partnering with Ingrid Hayes to oh. make sure that all of the, at least the Georgia applicants were called mm -hmm. and trying to encourage them to choose Spelman. Mm -hmm. Are there other things that we should be doing that would have an impact? So I, I you know, we have talked about this a great deal uh, at Spelman. I, I think there are a few things that we can do to help you. So for one, I think we need to compile a, a, a list of all the new scholarship opportunities. And they're considerable. You know, um, Patty Quillen and Reed Hastings have given us the 20 full scholarships every year. Uh, we have full scholarships from Morgan Stanley. Um, and uh, we have scholarship funds at some scholarship funds as a result of some long term uh, donors, um, Beth and Seth. Uh, Seth Klarman. So we have a whole new slate of new financial aid, and we should make sure that prospective students or students who have been accepted know that they have an opportunity to compete for these dollars. So that's number one. We should give that, that list to you. The other thing is we should make sure that our, our students who are thinking about Spelman know about all of these great programs. They've got to know that Dr. Washington is here um, making sure we have we have a first rate data science program, and Dr. Pearson is, is has all these new opportunities in AI and machine learning, and that Dr. Finley has you know created an extraordinary uh, art history and curatorial studies program. Documentary film has been flourishing here, so I mean there are all kinds of new initiatives across the board in STEM, humanities, science social science, we have new pathways into medical school, new pathways into law schools, so that, you know, by your junior year, you can be accepted in a law school and, and go straight into law school and then have your law school paid for. So we really need to arm you with all of the new things that have developed so you can make the best argument possible. That's great. We look forward to that. Um, just as another question, Dr. Campbell, kudos to you all for getting students back on campus. I know that there are still schools out there who have not been able to bring their students back on campus with confidence, and it seems as though you have. When we met with Dr. Holloman, our last meeting for the general body meeting, it seemed as though the target number of students to bring on campus was a little bit larger or higher 
than the 260. Can you speak just a little bit about that and how that might be impacting the economics because on-campus tuition, on-campus um, room and board is, you know, the next largest component of our revenue generating? Right, that's a really good question, Adrian. We, uh, in we had 356 spaces available. That, that was our, our ceiling. Um, we only got about, I think there are now 240. And the reason for that is a lot of parents just did not want to send their children away from home during this period. You know, the good news about Spelman is that 75% of our students come from outside of the uh, state, right? That means if they were coming, they had to get in the car and drive, they had to get on an airplane, they had to bring the family, the family had to then go back. And so, so a lot, a lot of families just decided, be, at, and it was at the point when they had to make that decision, the numbers were going up, the infection rates were going up, the death rates were going up, the hospitalization. So um, that definitely had a, a chilling effect on our numbers. Um, but not so much so that it depressed our finances because the overall enrollment went up. So we had projected our spring enrollment to be lower and it actually was higher than our projection. So it, 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 it didn't exactly balance out, but it certainly helped balance. And, the, and, and finally, we are very fortunate that the CARES Act enables us to plug any financial holes that we're experiencing this spring. It's been, very, it's been great in terms of providing more financial aid for students to help them stay in school and also for any shortfalls that we may have had. So that, that was a lifesaver as well. Okay, I wanna pick up just a little bit on the federal involvement. Um, as you mentioned, the CARES Act. And you have been standing boldly for Spelman. And I know we have been active in the past with um, lobbying, et cetera. And I know that we lost Anita Estelle, who was um, yeah. Spelman's lobbyist. And so as we're looking forward and what I introduced this meeting as, as the new era, right? We're closing an era and we're beginning a new for more bold conversations and things that we can ask for. Are there things that you are working on that we can assist because we're preparing for a Spelman Day at the Capitol, mm -hmm. but we're also engaged. We've seen more um, advocacy and activism during this past political and election yes. cycle. Are there things that we can do that you were trying to sponsor um, at the federal level that can assist Spelman and other HBCUs? So I, I, I think that what we should do is plan to have an or some type of organizational meeting. We have, we, we have a new lobbyist. She was trained by Anita Estelle. Um, her name is Shauna Watney. She's with uh, the law firm of Holland and Knight. They have a, a, an office in Washington. I think we ought to get together with her to uh, figure out how we should be approaching the new administration. We have two senators whom we know are going to be very sympathetic to Spelman College. Um, we have a new presidential administration, which we believe will be very sympathetic to HBCU. Um, so um, we should probably come together and, and do a little brainstorming about exactly what we want to take to Washington this year with our Associate Vice President of, Gover of Government Relations. Okay, great. Ladies, I am looking for questions in the chat and they're all just accolades to Dr. Campbell. Are there any questions from the audience that you all would like to place into the chat? If so, please, please drop them in. I'm sure she'll be willing to entertain them. Dr. Campbell, I'll just ask you, were you able to get your vaccination? I was, and I will have my second dose um, next, well, yeah, next week. I will have my second dose. And, and actually, Adrian, in two weeks time, you know, it's two weeks after your second dose that you, you have full immunity. I, I actually plan to resume my president's reading circle at the college in person. Of course, I'll still wear my mask, but um, it'll be an opportunity for me to be in the presence in a room with you know seven or eight 
students and, and, and I can continue that relationship with them. So I'm looking forward to it. That's good, that's good. I am, let me see, I see. So I've asked for the new, I'm gonna type in the, the name of the new um, lobbyist. Yes, thank you. Sharna, and as you're doing that, Dr. Campbell, you know, it's interesting that we're looking at a new business model or an enhanced business model, I think we should call it, because the traditional will still remain. So with Guild and Collegius, can you just talk a little bit about the branding of both of those products? And I know that you all have been considering this for some time. Are, where are you in the final decisions? Are we still, you know, entertaining um, different thoughts on how that those two different avenues would be branded? So we're, we actually, I'm glad you raised that because we plan to involve uh, uh, the alumni. We're having a series uh, under Linda Patton's, with Linda Patton's um, assistance, we're having a series of focus groups with a slate of different names. Uh, we're gonna get feedback from, from these three alumni focus groups. And then based on that feedback, we're actually gonna send a survey to the alumni in general and say, what do you think? Um, because we wanna make sure that this is branded so that there's an understanding that there's Spelman College that awards degrees and there is a Spelman that is uh, offering adult learning. And that these are, while these are related, it's the same institution offering them, there are two different, very different ways of learning. So. Uh, we want the branding to communicate that. So you'll be hearing from us. Great. We do have one question in the chat and it's around the um, outcomes of your COVID-19 cases, if any. Were there any hospitalizations that took uh, place? I will say that, uh, you know, we required uh, testing before students came. And I think three or four students uh, tested positive before they came to campus. And so they could not come to campus. So that was actually a very helpful protocol for us to have in place in the first place. To date, you know, knock wood, I always say to date, we have not had um, a positive test uh, among our students. Um, I will say before students came to campus, we had um, a few positive tests among staff and of course they couldn't come back to work until they were they had to be quarantined and they also had to have a negative I think two negative PRC tests before they could come back to campus. Um, we have not to my knowledge I think we may have I, I take that back we may have had some uh, incidents of COVID I think two incidents among faculty but they had never come to campus. So they had contracted COVID during the summer or during the fall. Uh, they've recovered, but they never came to campus and they haven't been to campus since. So, um, our, our, and our community has in no way been immune. Uh, you know, we've had people have lost their, uh, their parents, their siblings, uh, close relatives. So, so it, it, even though we don't have COVID here on campus, our campus community has been impacted. And so, Dr. Campbell, you bring up a, a really good point. We, you know, the chapter has been um, impacted with significant loss, and, and I know that you're close to that. How have we, um, the COVID protocols are fantastic to uh, deal with that, but we know that there also sometimes is um, anxiety that is an additional pressure as a result of this because they're dealing with other situations. Have we been able to handle the, um, mental health issues that may be evolving and how does that look now on campus? Mental health issues are significant. And I recall that um, when we uh, first moved off campus back in March and I was in touch with groups of students like our, our, um, our wisdom scholars who are our stop scholars who are in, you know, in ministry or uh, some of our Bonner scholars or others, I found that even among some of our best students, 
I mean, our really, really top, you know, GPA, you know, you know, very academically successful students, there was a high degree of anxiety, of stress, of fatigue, of feeling overwhelmed. And so we, we, we had to, as, as, a, as a college, we kind of had to step back and say, okay, how do we need to organize ourselves so that we um, can stage interventions before these feelings become overwhelming, uh, and 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 before these student these feelings really prohibit our students from being able to participate in their uh, the experience of of learning. And we we completely revised. For example, I'll, I'll I'll give you one example. With our first year students, we completely revised how we organized them with study buddies. Uh, they're actually called PALs, um, peer assisted learning. And these were groups of students who usually on campus would help us out with special events and uh, first day of school and other, other things. We organized them so that they each, there were about 40 of them, 40 or 50 of them. We organized them so that they each had five first year students who were their responsibility. And they could, they, they could come up with any way that they wanted to engage with them. They could have study sessions. They could have Bible study sessions. They could have movie night. They could have salon night. They could have, you know, um, uh, uh, chit chats about current events. It was up to them. And we found that the uh, response was extraordinary. That, 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 uh, a dramatic increase in, in the academic performance of the students who participated. And what was interesting to me is that the upper class students who were the mentors for these also had a very salutary, had a very salutary impact on them because all of a sudden they were responsible for their younger sisters and they had to look after them and it gave them a real sense of shared purpose. So we are continuing to look at ways that we can use the resources we have, which is our students and our faculty and our staff, to, to figure out ways to keep our students engaged. And this is where, as I said, things like Sister to Sister and our mentorship program with our alumni are absolutely invaluable. Great. Dr. Campbell, there's a question here, and you know we have a rich potpourri of um, alumni, whether they be young, middle-aged, seasoned, but we also have our Pauline Drake scholars. So the question is with regard to what will be the relationship with those PEDs and the online learning that we're rolling out? Or is there a connection, a direct connection? So, so what's interesting, um, our PED students are degree students, right? So they're part of our our Spelman population, our, 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 our fundamental Spelman population. What we're learning is that because we've been offering our regular education, our, our degree granting ed education online, we're already making it easier for our PEDS students. So we're, we're now going to think more deliberately, how can we help support the PEDS by giving them more opportunities to study online. So for example, um, summer school now has become very popular at Spelman. Uh, when I first got here, we had about 60 students who would take online summer school. This summer we had 500 students who took summer school online. So you can imagine that for a PED student, that's a real convenience. We're now offering online to our degree students in something called winter semester. Mm -hmm. So when classes are over in December, a week later, they start up online and you can take classes online during winter semester. We may do May semester, which would also offer our students a window to do online. So we'll have several opportunities if you're a PED student to augment your, uh, your education by having these online opportunities. And I think that's gonna make all the difference in the world for them. Outstanding. Okay, this is a, a question from our Facebook page. 
Um, and they're asking, what is the plan for producing more MDs? So as I mentioned, the fastest growing major at Spelman College is the Health Science Career Program, which is um, not all, but most of our students who are interested in becoming uh, MDs uh, go through that program. Of course, the other um, gauge, of course, is biology, and that's our second fastest growing program is biology. So, so we know that we have continued to be a, a, an important draw for those students who have that interest. And what Dr. Bass has done so exceedingly well is she established, has established a series of MOUs or memoranda of understanding with leading um, medical schools. So the Perelman School at the University of Pennsylvania, uh, Mount Sinai Hospital, um, Vanderbilt, of course, Morehouse School of Medicine, so that students as early as, the, you know, at the end of their sophomore year can begin that process of preparing for entry, preparing for their MCAT. Um, we have a health science academy with Morehouse School of Medicine. Um, and so students, again, are, are always uh, are able to brush up on their skills uh, prepared to, to be successful in taking those NCATs and, and taking all of the courses that they need to have successful acceptance into medical school. And so we feel very, we feel very good about the direction that Dr. Bass has been taking our health science careers program. And I think in, in a few years, you're going to see a real increase in the number of MDs that are coming out of Spelman College. That's great. Well, Dr. Campbell, as always, you give us so much information about the work that's going on at Spelman and it continues to make us proud to be alumni and to pitch in to do that help. So my last question for you, given the pandemic, we've all been sporting these new hairdos, you know? So I'm asking, are you gonna get to the Angela Davis status or are you gonna keep it at this size of a fro? <laughs> Because we so like I'm thinking something between Angela Davis and Colin Kaepernick. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I love what do it. you think? <laughs> I love it. I love it. I just I'm I'm always excited to see what people look like, you know, after coming out. So okay. we like the fro. We like the enhanced fro. So keep it up. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks again for joining us. And ladies, that concludes our meeting and our session for the state of the college with President Dr. Mary Schmidt Campbell. Enjoy the rest of the weekend. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye, guys. <laughs>